Hello everyone! Welcome once again into my studio. Happy Monday! I am on my way to work today, but um, I just want to share with you some something that I did that I made. And these are the earrings I'm wearing, the rings I'm wearing, using the tiny, tiny paper beads. So, you can make them yourself, you can make the beads yourself, or get them from me. I have all my links below, but I want to show you how pretty it is and how simple it is to do. And I mix them with, uh, with you know, just my regular rings, um, and you can use them as a thumb ring. It's really hard. Actually, this project started as um, I want to make a thumb ring. Uh, it looks so pretty like that. And then I just couldn't stop making them. So I made them into earrings. I made them into a pendant. Uh, you know, the circle uh, one ring pendant is very popular but uh, they are very common, but when you make something out of paper beads like this, they become, um, they become special. So, you can wear it the way I'm wearing it. Uh, you can even, they look really nice, and it's kind of similar to something I did in the past, and I know uh, one of you asked me how to make that ring and I did not make a tutorial because it was so complicated to make, but this will have that same effect if you wear them double like that, you see? So that's what we're going to be doing today. So these are the earrings and the pendant and the rings. Uh, that we are going to be making today and here it is up close it is so pretty and this is the what I call the O ring pendant you can make them um, bigger circle if you want uh, but very uh, simple, just you don't even need a jump ring, you just string it, you just string the chain through there. And um, the, I am making a kit for this because what I want is that when I make something, that if you want to make the same thing, I, you already have all the supplies you need in one place. But you can also make the beads yourself, the paper beads. These are about uh, four to five millimeter. And, um, and then you can just uh, follow my instructions from here because um, I will also be... Uh, including a instructions that I wrote myself and very proud <laughs> I uh, I have no clue in using all the software on how to make your beads beautiful writing on instructions so I just did it myself so the kit will be of course my beading in a nutshell kit will come with the tiny tiny beads so this is what we're going to be using today this is what i made into this rings and it will come with that it will come with the instruction i just showed you with a monofilament string or it's called um illusion cord uh point 12 and uh beads you know, the beads that go, I'm sorry, in between these. So this, I use Swarovski's here, but your kit will come with um, 
uh, other beads that are available to me. So it will be a surprise. So anyway, let's go ahead and make this. You need to cut like about uh, 30 inches or depending on how big your ring is or uh, two feet and uh, you need uh, this and you need the beads and then let's get started. This beautiful O-rings um, just have three supplies that you need. You need a three millimeter I call accent beads in this case I'm using black. You need the slightly bigger paper beads so these are about four or five millimeter and you can find them on my Etsy or you can buy the kit which I am going to be putting up on my Etsy as well with the instructions so you need to cut um, about 12 inches of the monofilament string I'm sorry, 24 inches, depending on how big you want your ring to be. And first, you string four paper beads. String four paper beads into your monofilament string or your illusion cord is what they call this and it is actually just like a very thin fishing line although in the I will not know how uh, what's the size uh, of a fishing line this is because they go by pound test so anyway string four and then the last bead that you strung that you put in there you will crisscross or the fourth bead you will crisscross so this is a very simple beading technique that most of you already know I'll just hold my two ends together and pull it down so that it is centered Okay, and you will get this cross looking uh, bead, this start. Okay, then you will again put one bead on each side. I'm telling you, this is really fun to make because it's like a no brainer, you don't have to think about it. I actually don't like that term a no-brainer but it just means that you know it's something that doesn't need a lot of concentration okay and then bead on each side and then the third bead you will crisscross okay like so now you have this Okay, one more time, bead on each side, and then crisscross on the third bead. You, if you make like um, this side, this, uh, the pendant, for example, if you want to make that, that's about 40 beads 36 to 40 beads okay just so you know you can um, go to my Facebook as well and ask me anything okay you have to follow me first though if that's not a trouble so there crisscross on the third bead and now you have this okay it will curl up like that but that's okay so continue doing that the ring that I have for example this ring I wear like a size 7 I have about 13 
rows. Okay, so let me come back uh, when I have the length that we need. Now I have 12 rows, so I count them, um, count the mi middle beads. So I have 12 mi middle beads like that. So now we're ready to join. I just get rid of this. To join, <clears throat> you string the two beads. Do not string the one bead. Do not crisscross on, on a third bead. You don't need a third bead. You will crisscross the first bead, the very first bead at the end that you um, strung. Okay? So crisscross there. This is your third bead. Okay? Crisscross here. And then you are making this into a round thing, a ring. Okay? So let me see what's going on here. Crisscross the wrong way, okay? So you have the two beads on the side. Take the two wires and put it through the tail, the tail end of your of your piece, okay? So pull. Pull, pull, and there's your ring, okay? Right now, it doesn't, it's deformed because you need to bead the side to make it stand, stand up and hold up like that, okay? So now you have completed your ring. You will then... Um, Two strings are coming out from that red bead right there, the very first one, okay? So take your, I just call this right, but doesn't really matter, and you will put it through the first, the next side bead, okay? You are preparing this to bead your side, okay? You don't put a bead yet from the center bead <clears throat> that it's coming out from, you will then put the string through the beads that are on the side, okay? You are just getting ready and it loosens like that, but you can just pull it, okay? So now it's both strings are coming out from the sides. Now you are ready to bead. So actually, this is the fun part. I like doing this part. So then you will take, take an accent bead and then put it through the next side bead. So it's just basically beading that spaces, the spaces that you see on the side right there, okay? I'll do the same thing on the other side. Let's put it through the next bead. And the nice thing about using the illusion cord is that your piece becomes very pliable, okay? Like so. So now I have the two accent beads. And you continue all around it until you reach the end. Okay. For those of you who already figure this out, I'm sure you can stop watching the video and start doing it. Okay. 
and the other side and so on and so forth. I have beaded all around it and only uh, this two left. So I'm just going to do the last two sides. When you're making an earring, you will not bead that part because this is where you will put your jump ring. Like so. Okay? So, we are uh, going to end this now. So, bead the last two spaces right there. So I, I'm loving the black bead. So if it's hard for you to, uh, for the wire to go through, you can bend your piece like so. So I just call this my piece, okay? <laughs> for the l lack of a better term. So you can always like kind of pinch it like that. So you will see the hole because it's going to be hard and tight because you have that other bead. You have this black bead. So in fact, I have a hard time passing that through right now. It's going in the black bead and I don't want that. So I want it to just go out from, the, from this gray bead. Okay. Okay, so go out from that. You are beating your last side space. Okay, and then do the other one. Make it go through here and through the accent bead. So... The whole idea is for your two beads to meet up on the side. So this one, you want it to go through the paper bead and the accent bead. And when you want to do that, it doesn't want to do that. So kind of a pinch it. And I hate to struggle when I'm in front of it. it doesn't want to go through at the same time so I'll make it go through that first now you have them both here and the left string will go through the accent bead Okay, so now the left string is out of that accent bead. The right string, you will not put it through the accent bead just like the, the, one, the left one. You will make it go through the middle, the middle bead, the middle paper bead, okay? Because the whole idea is that they will meet up on the side, okay? So, push it through that needle bead, and you can manipulate your piece by pinching it or bending it. So, now it's going through, okay? Now, they are both here in this side. So, the next thing you do is just tie a square knot. You know, the left over right, right over left knot, okay? And you will end this by pulling your thread through the paper bead, okay? It will be hiding the knot through the paper bead because it has big holes, right? And pull it and then you will cut it off. Make sure you don't cut the main string. And your ring is finished. Okay. There it 
There it is. So, I hope you like my tutorial today. And if you want to see more pictures and step-by-step -step, uh, photo of how I did it, you can go to my Facebook. Link is down below. Thanks for watching.